Hey guys, Justin here coming at you from the 2x2 test tent with another unboxing video. This one is from our friends at Spider Farmer. They have their SE3000 that they want us to take a look at. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. Click the links below for all the discount codes, all the merch and everything that you could ever want down below in the discount links. And make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let's get into it. And there we go. Got it all put together. Obviously, there is some assembly required with these lights because they do come in a much smaller box, but it is very easy to assemble. Let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look. Okay, so besides the power cord, the driver, and the hanging kit, this is what comes inside the box. Of course, you've got a couple of uh, rope ratchets here. This is going to be the uh, plastic gear rope ratchets on that. Then you got the daisy chain cord, aka phone cable, and uh, then you got the uh, owner's manual. So we can take a look at this here. It's got their full spectrum chart here. It tells all their different models. Feel free to take a look at that and uh, pause if you would like to uh, look more at that. Let's zoom in a little bit. And right here you can see actually, they have it right in the manual. LM301B. That is going to be the big difference between this light and the last light that I reviewed. Uh, there will be some other changes that I will point out, but the two lights are extremely similar, other than the fact that this one uses LM301B and the last one uh, used, uh, what was it, Epistar? Yeah, something that wasn't Samsung. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be the main difference between these two lights. So they're actually very similar in most ways other than that. So here's a little more about the manual, construction, assembly. You can see it comes separate with all the different bars. Everything's separate. Then you have to kind of put it together. It's really easy, no tools. No tools, no screwdriver, no nothing. All you need is this, just your fingers. Really, really easy. More on the assembly. I'm just kind of uh, showing this in case people lose their manual, they can go reference it again. So there again, if you want to look at this stuff closer, feel free to pause. But we're just going to fly through it just to kind of, uh, like I said, just save it for people. And then we get into a different language. We can skip that, I guess. We don't need to go through every language, right? Let's see where we at. Get to warranty. All right, so here's grow tips and warranty. Uh, warranty returned and replaced, returned or replaced within 30 days, of course. Um, do 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 non artificial damage, can't break it basically, and then return it. 90 days, all free warranty, free components, free repairs, provided within three months after delivery. Pretty standard there. Uh, three years free components can be provided. Uh, three months, uh, or, uh, three months to a year, free components. Buyers only have to pay one-way freight and repairing fees. So essentially, it's almost like a 90-day warranty. Um, I am not a fan of this thing, uh, of, of warranties that these guys are doing now. Uh, a lot of companies are touting this three-year warranty or a five-year warranty, but what it comes down to is a 90-day to a one-year warranty. Um, everything else you have to pay for. So I'm not a big fan of that, and I wish they would change that. Um, to me, it's kind of dishonest. And it's not saying spider farmer, uh, anything really against them in particular, cause it's an industry wide issue. Um, they're just kind of following, following the chain because obviously if they don't, then somebody else is going to advertise a three year warranty. And if they're honest about their warranty and the other company's not, I mean, you can see where that's going. Uh, so <laughs> you fault them, but you can't fault them. Um, yeah, but I'd love to see this changed in the industry. I absolutely despise warranties like this so um that's that's pretty much what it is uh free components binders bear the freight back and forth uh so really the only difference between one year one and year three is you have to pay back and forth freight instead of one way so you have another freight charge which really is just honestly not going to make it worth it uh, these things are expensive to ship shipping is expensive and getting more expensive every single day so uh, when a company makes a, a light like this out of quality components, they should stand behind it uh, and behind those components with a much better warranty, in my opinion. But 
is what it is. I guess we can move on from that now that I've stated my piece several times for like the 50th time again on that issue. That's all that's in the warranty right there. There's some info made in China, spider farmer, info support, telephone, all that good stuff. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the light itself. Now, in going over the light itself, uh, Spider Farmer's actually done a lot of things really, really well compared to their competitor and compared to the last light that I reviewed. The main thing that you can see is there's not a mess of wires right here. The, they actually use a much better design, in my opinion, for this light than what the last one I reviewed did. Much, much better, like a hundred times better. I can't even stress how much better this design is. It's impossible to put into words. Um, this is super clean. You've just got a connection here that you have to screw together. And uh, it's just a push in and twist to lock it in. And that's it. And each one of them has that, which is, like I said, a far superior design uh, as opposed to the last one, which had a cable that ran all the way across here and then had four individual dongles off of it. And then you have this big mess of cables that you have to figure out. I mean, there's enough cables already with this stuff. You don't need more. You don't need more. And as you can see, I did mount the driver to the bars. You could do that on the last light as well. It did come with the hardware. I showed that. Uh, this is a sick looking light. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and mount it. It looks really cool. I dig the design. Uh, I dig the color scheme, the black with the orange. Absolutely sick. Love it. So it, it's a great looking light. Get a look at the driver here. It is Spider Farmer brand driver. So you don't really know. Uh, what actual brand it is because it is branded by Sparta, Spider Farmer. Uh, and then we've got the uh, dimmer and everything right here, of course. And then where you hook it up for the, for the daisy chain. Now we go under the light and we see the bars, the main star of the show. Hey, there's a uh, UV diode. Nice. So right off the bat, you can see they've got a UV in there. Let's see if we can find an infrared. Yeah, I think that's going to be one, right? there yep that dim red that's an infrared so it does have a little bit of uv and a little bit of infrared as well in the light which is always nice to have get a nice shot for the uh the title there there we go but yeah it's gonna be a mix of uh, cool white and warm white all the way through just like most of them you got four bars across here excellent coverage the bar lights really kill the game on coverage it is just absolutely nuts beautiful light beautiful coverage now they say this thing will uh do a three by three i'm more in the two by two uh for flower i would say three by three for veg personally uh you could use it in a three by three for flower as well but it would be a little lacking in the corners so um if you could deal with that eh, go ahead everybody grows differently everybody grows differently lots of different opinions so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a look and see what kind of par this sucker pushes, man. This is a, uh, a nice little banger. Let's go. All right, we got the four corner par test hooked up, all ready to go. So let's uh, take a look at what we've got for numbers. This is at the uh, bare minimum here, as far as the, the uh, dimmer goes. So we're gonna see how low it'll go. And it looks like uh, 25.3 watts. We're pushing around, uh, around 80 par to the corners here. Which isn't going to be enough to really do anything. So let's uh, let's bring that up a little bit here, so we can hit around seedling territory. Yeah, about right there, probably around 120, 130. That's going to be for seedlings and clones. Uh, there again, this is at uh, 19 inches, just to show you here. 19 inches, just like I ran the last one. That is uh, going to be uh, accounting for one inch. Uh, of the sensor height so it's an 18 inch canopy essentially so yeah that's uh where we're sitting uh you can see it's about 20 percent about 20 percent for uh seedlings and clones is where we're sitting center reading i'm sure is going to be just fine yeah 138 yeah not bad at all not bad at all perfect i'll take it so let's go up to uh Let's go up to veg, which I like to do about 350. Some people will do more, but minimum I'd say is about 300, 350. So let's go ahead and try to get to there. 
Now the corners are going to be a little different as far as the, uh, the, the brightness goes. That's just because of the environment that I'm testing in. I test in an actual grow tent so that you'll be able to uh, basically replicate the exact same thing. Uh, this corner is a little bit low because it has that little that little hole there that breaks up the the um, the light reflection reflection off of that wall. So that's a little bit lower because of that. This is lower obviously because there is no reflection here at all, and then this one's lower because there's no reflection here where there is back there. So uh, all four corners are going to be a little bit different just because it's a it's a tent. That's uh, that's the way it goes. This isn't a box, so that's uh, what we have to deal with. And uh, it looks like we're at, what here, about 40, 45% probably you'd say? Yeah, 45% on the uh, dimmer there to hit uh, veg. Oh my, why'd that go off? There, my uh, laptop went off for a second there. All right, so that's gonna be for veg, awesome. Now let's kick it up to uh, the bare minimum for flower, which I say is about 600. You could go as low as 500, but I like to keep it at 600 or above. And I think we're there. There we go, 600, 640 in the back. Again, that back corner there is gonna be pretty hot because it has the most reflection, uh, just un, uh, unblocked reflection. Of, of any of the corners so there we go about 600 if you had this tent closed you would easily be 600 in every corner in this situation so that's what we're going to go with that's going to sit us here on the dimmer at almost 70 just a little bit under 70 percent so not bad at all you can run this at 70 percent and get nice fat nugs Nice fat nugs at 70%. Let's go ahead and take a uh, center reading. Oh, I guess I forgot to take a center reading on the uh, veg too. Ah, look at that, 638, that is excellent. It's gonna be amazing, guys. You guys know it's gonna be amazing. I don't even have to take a, the center reading on the veg. You know it's gonna be absolutely amazing. I mean, look at that, 550 in this corner. And then you put it in the middle, even in the weak corner to the middle, you're not even a hundred par from the weakest corner to the middle. That is excellent. That is absolutely excellent. I'll take that all day long, all day long. Well, now let's, uh, let's just blow it open. Boom. Max all the way to max. Let's see what this sucker does. And it looks like a thousand, man. This is going to be a thousand with this tent closed. It's going to be a thousand thousand to every corner. That's killer. Absolutely killer. Center reading. What are we pushing? 10.30. 10, so it, incredibly even. Incredibly even. Wow. They did a great job of this. And you can see they, they did do the diode spacing. So you've got a lot less spacing in the middle. And then a lot tighter spacing on the edges. Really, really great. Now you can adjust the uh, the bars if you wanted to, to a different uh, spacing. It does have that ability since you can actually uh, unscrew each bar individually and move them around. It does have the ability to do that if you want, but the way it's set up now, it has these little markers here that shows you where to put everything. Now you can go by that or you can go kind of on your own, but you can see if you go by what they say, it is extremely even coverage, extremely even coverage. That's killer. And that's gonna be a thousand par to every corner. That is gonna get you incredible yields, incredible density. And uh, I mean, that's exactly what you want. It may actually be too strong for some new growers out there. Uh, newer growers, I'd recommend uh, the six to 800 par range. Uh, this is really reserved for the, the better growers to get to a thousand par and, and higher. The more veteran experienced growers that have that had a few rounds under their belt and they know kind of how to uh, manage nutrients better and uh, and things like that and once you get over a thousand you really need co2 to take advantage of that uh, that additional par so this is a great great two by two banger light absolutely great 
Let's fire up the uh, spectrum meter here. Throw that back over there. All right, so we're zeroed out here on the meter. Let's take a reading. It is gonna show a little bit higher because it's a taller meter as far as the, uh, the par goes, but what we're looking at is that right there. That's what we're looking for. That is gonna be the spectrum. So you can see they've got a bump at 740 there. Gonna be for your infrared. Then you got uh, 660 for the red spike. Blue and a little tiny, tiny, tiny. It's the tiniest of bumps there down in the UV in the 430 range. So yeah, full spectrum. Mostly red, as you can see, in the red to blue. About a three to one red to blue, which is about what you want for most full spectrum lights. You don't want too much blue. You want to get a decent amount of red to get some fat flowers. Got some far red, infrared, UV. Looking great. Great, great readings. So really, uh, all there is left to do is let this sucker warm up a bit, take some heat readings, and uh, that's it. Just wrap it up. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, we're back. We've let this warm up for uh, about an hour, hour and a half. Plenty of time to get it warmed up. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Look for any crazy hot spots or anything. I don't really see anything too out of the ordinary. Other than the bars are actually pretty low. That's pretty good. 112, 113. Usually they're in like the 120, 130 range. So they're doing a really good job of uh, having enough metal on these bars to dissipate the heat well. That's going to keep the diodes lasting a lot longer. And yeah, 116 next to the driver. The driver is pretty warm. 137 to 142. So that is on the upper end as far as heat on the driver. They're actually driving the driver pretty hard. But you can see the bar temp is amazing. 118 on the hottest corner there. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. 112 to 118 on the bars. <laughs> Killing the game. So yeah. This is going to be a really good uh, two by two banger for sure. As you can see from the par ratings, just the two by two off the charts, but uh, three by three it's going to be veg or as I would call it like a poor man's three by three flower. But other than that, man, this thing is, is pretty banger. The, the design is better than the uh, last one that I reviewed. The diodes are better than the last one I reviewed. It's just a really good light. So, Check it out. Links below if you guys want to take a look at the uh, the offers that they got going right now on this light. Make sure you use the discount code that's down there as well. And click on the links uh, for the discount codes down there. There's tons of discount codes. I have so many discount codes for so many different companies. It's on my website. Click the link. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you guys later. Happy growing.